Welcome to the CTA Foundation CES interview series. My name is Matt Ader. I am the Vice President of Vespero and the Vice Chair of the CTA Foundation. Today, I'm joined by Chris Thompson. He is the Smart Technology Specialist at New England Assistive Technology at Oak Hill. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Thanks, Chris. And uh, for those of folks who don't know uh, New England Assistive Technology at Oak Hill, can you give us a little background on the organization? Sure. Uh, we are a center. New England Assistive Technology is a center of a larger organization called Oak Hill. We've been in existence since 1893. We started off as an institute for the blind, and we kind of evolved over time to serve people with uh, <clears throat> excuse me, all sorts of abilities. Uh, we have a number of centers. We have group homes. We have schools. We have uh, an adaptive sports and fitness center. We have uh, a number of specialists within New England assistive technology, and we all kind of have our own expertise. Uh, we have a blind low vision specialist. We have a speech language pathologist. We have someone who specializes in uh, dyslexia. And then my realm is smart technology, and it's kind of been a uh, fun realm to be involved with because this technology is so fascinating. These devices that have been uh, emerging rapidly over the last five years. Uh, so I'm really excited for, for what I do here. And we are a nonprofit resource. Uh, we offer a number of services. Uh, we do home assessments. We do uh, presentations and webinars. And uh, we help to match people up with technology that could help them live more independently and gain control of their everyday lives. And um, we also offer training so we can also come back. Uh, we recommend devices, we don't sell devices. So we'll point them in the direction of, of what uh, might help them uh, live more independently. And um, then we come back and we can offer training and help with setup and configuration. And fortunately we've made a number of key partnerships like with Consumer Technology Association Foundation, which has really helped us broaden our reach and, and broaden people's uh, uh, access to learning about these uh, accessible technologies and universally designed technologies, which is a, is a beautiful path that so many technologies are taking. So for the last several years, the CTA Foundation has um, sponsored something that you guys call show or smart home on wheels. Can you enlighten the audience about this? Yes. Yeah, so we for for a few years, we had a demonstration room at our uh, main uh, campus in Hartford, Connecticut, and people would come in and, and they would see the technology and the, the devices and uh, we noticed that there were a couple of issues that uh, we couldn't always get to the people uh, in, in other areas uh, who really needed to see these uh, devices and these capabilities. And people always, you know, when you set up technology in a room, they in devices in a room, they don't always connect the dots with how it could apply with their everyday lives. So we really needed to come up with a solution that would uh, be able to further our outreach and, and put these devices in front of people <clears throat> and by the devices, I mean like all the mainstream things, anything that can help promote independent living, uh, despite, I love that we're a nonprofit. So despite the manufacturer, we can showcase Amazon, Google, anything, Apple. Um, so when we were coming up with this idea, we, we had the idea of doing a smart home on wheels, but we didn't know exactly how it would come to fruition. And uh, fortunately, we got this uh, partnership with Consumer Technology Association Foundation. And we uh, constructed a tiny home on a trailer, like a mobile tiny home on wheels. It's constructed just like a small little home. It's completely wheelchair accessible. It has a ramp coming in. Uh, and it's eight feet wide by about 24 feet long and uh, about 13 feet tall. And um, we've been able to get uh, quite a bit of people in there uh, and we have it set up to where when you first come in, there's actually something called an access method station is what I like to call it. Uh, but it's really a, a station that's set up so you can control it multiple ways. 
the, the, we could really try to capitalize on a person's ability, no matter what that ability is. If it's uh, if they can just move their eyes, we try to utilize eye gaze to control it or uh, voice. Uh, nowadays, we really try to showcase automation and hands-free ways to control the environment. Um, and then there's a number of different manufacturers in there. This is a, it's a wonderful little little home that's set up. It's got a living room. It's got a kitchen area. Uh, it's got windows with smart shades on it, smart locks, ring doorbells, video doorbells, uh, all sorts of security um, devices because security is always a big topic for people that, that want to live more independently. Uh, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. And we've been able to take it uh, to fulfill the mission, which we really wanted to do. We've taken it all over the region. We took it uh, to a number of local or regional conferences, all the way up to Boston and Portland, Maine. Uh, and over, uh, we can literally now say thousands of people have toured it because I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, and we were supposed to start taking it nationwide this year. I was scheduled to go to Washington, D.C. and uh, uh, the conference in uh, Tampa, Florida. Uh, but then COVID uh, threw a wrench in those plans. But um, so uh, we're hoping as uh, time goes on, we'll be able to uh, take it out again and, and hopefully keep broadening that reach to bring these technologies in front of people and to really help educate them on all the amazing and empowering accessible capabilities. So when we think about uh, smart home technology, many of the people watching this are going to think about, you know, talking to Google or talking to Alexa or their iPhone and things of that nature and all the other smart home technologies you mentioned. You mentioned assistive technology here, and I'd love to have you describe a little bit about that because who's who's the audience you're trying to work with here, I think helps um, helps the people viewing the video more about who you are. Yeah, uh, assistive technology. So technology is really a, anything that can help someone accomplish something. Assistive technology is typically geared more towards someone with a disability, someone who is facing a challenge, uh, either because of uh, uh, an impairment. Uh, we try to figure out a way to, despite that impairment, find a way to use a device to overcome it uh, and to gain more control. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of technologies that are specifically made for uh, those types of challenges uh, for assistive technology, for, for example, eye gaze devices. Uh, uh, but then there's technologies or the capabilities that are built into things like you mentioned, like an iPhone or a um, these Google Assistant devices. Um, fortunately, there's there's a lot of universal design that's being implemented that's really leveling the playing field in common devices and technologies that are helping people gain more control through things that they, they use uh, every day. They just don't even know that they have the capabilities in their pocket. So we try to educate them on that too. And then, and, and to show them how it works. And this, and, and this gives them the smart home on wheels gives them a way not only to see how it works, but they can sit down and try it and see for themselves how the lights come on or how the door unlocks. Um, and then as far as the audience too, we're targeting not only people with disabilities, uh, but caregivers as well, uh, people, family members, uh, we're trying to promote social connectivity uh, because with independence can also come. This was something I was seeing a couple of years ago before the pandemic hit that even though we were getting people independence, uh, we had to make sure they were still staying socially connected. So we had to make sure we were finding accessible ways through voice control to call their family through drop-ins of devices like an Amazon Echo or a a, a Google um, Nest speaker, uh, just ways to, to use those devices to uh, use voice control to, to stay in touch and to stay connected um, and to give peace of mind for safety because a lot of these technologies offer a lot of safety uh, is to be able to control a door lock, to be able to have oven safety devices or medication dispensers or prompting and reminders. So we try to showcase ways that this can impact anyone and can enhance anyone's lives to start utilizing some of the capabilities that they may not even realize they already have. 
It's 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 interesting because you look at the all the different technologies you mentioned the smart home technologies, and um, most of the people at uh, CES are going to think of smart home technology and how it benefits them. And if they could step back and think about that, I could, you know, in the past, if you wanted to vacuum, you would have to go get the vacuum and push it around. Mm -hmm. If you had limited mobility, you may not be able to do that. You also may not know where the dirt is. Mm -hmm. So being able to tell a vacuum to go do those things for you, you know, these are just, you know, little things to most of the world, but big things to people who may need that assistive technology. True. And that's usually the case. It's usually one or two things. It's like, if they can, if we could just figure out a way for them to control this or have this happen, uh, then that's the difference in whether or not they can uh, maintain their, the way that they want to continue to live in an independent way. And like you said, the, with the smart uh, robot vacuums or things like that, um, that's kind of a big thing I, I was, I'm really looking forward to seeing here at CES is um, ways to automate as well, because um, I'm seeing a lot in, in the field that because this, these technologies are so new, there can be a reluctance to want to embrace it. Um, or there is a challenge in getting the right training uh, because of a learning curve. Um, so in order to, to utilize things like automation and have things happen on schedules and have those vacuums just do, do it on their own uh, at certain times of the days or have lighting come on, utilizing sensors for safety on putting them on doors if it's a concern that someone may leave in the middle of the night um, or having uh, sensors put throughout the home to make sure lights come on uh, when someone's walking in the middle of the night to cut down on falls. Um, I think automation and hands-free control um, is, is really exciting for so many people and something I'm really looking forward to seeing. And I have a feeling there's going to be some fascinating things to see us this year. So it, yeah, you jumped right into it. You made my job easy. So <laughs> CES 2021 automation is your thing. That's what you want to look for. That's that. Yeah, I think automation and the fact that I think the post-pandemic world is going to be so automated and hands-free uh, because of uh, the, the way that, that our everyday lives have changed from the pandemic. I've just got a feeling that's kind of where the direction of technology is headed. And I think it's so wonderful for people who do face physical challenges to to see the world streamlining even more for them and to be able to utilize these new methods and, and the way the world's gonna change is gonna benefit society so much as a whole. Uh, I think for so many years, they, uh, a lot of these people uh, have felt kind of left behind, but now everything is becoming so inclusive. So uh, I, I, I'm really excited to see what will be showcased at CES and how it's geared for the post-pandemic world, because I think it holds a lot of opportunities for everybody. Well, thank you, Chris. If anyone wants to learn more about New England Assistive Technology at Oak Hill, where would they go? Uh, you can visit our website at oakhillct.org, uh, or you can go straight to the NEAT website at assistivetechnology.oakhillct.org. Excellent. Thank you, Chris, for your time today. If you'd learn, like to learn more about CTA Foundation, please go to ctafoundation.tech.